Hello, it's nice to be with you again. This week we're going to look at kittens. When you go off to choose your cat, it's a good idea to try a cat's home first. There are always an awful lot of cats and kittens who desperately need good homes, so it's not necessary to spend a lot of money buying one. When you go off to get your cat, don't forget to take something to carry him back in. I've got here two sorts of carrying box. This is just an ordinary cardboard one, which is fine for short journeys, and it fits together like that, and that'll keep your cat quite well. But if you're going on a long journey, then you really do need a bit better box, like the one at the end, which is a special basket, and your cat can look out of that and feel quite happy when he can see you on the long journey. Now, what have we got in here? We've got two little kittens, and they're fast asleep. Just let's wake them up for a little while, just to say hello. Aren't they sweet? really really lovely now when you when you decide to buy a cat you must make up your mind whether you want to buy a smooth or a long-haired one because a smooth haired one takes a lot less looking after than a long haired if you decide for it on a long haired one then you're going to have to brush it every day and take really good care of it and of course whether you want a male or a female cat and whichever you get when it's about six months old you must take it to the vet and have it neutered because we don't want lots and lots more kittens that need homes as well. When your cat's at 10 weeks old, take it to your vet and make sure that it's checked over and it's quite healthy. And there are special vaccinations that you must give your kitten. Now these are injections that make it safe for your cat to go outside and enable it not to catch diseases from other cats in the street. So don't forget at 10 weeks the first injection and then some of them you need to go back every year and have them done again. If you want to groom your cat, just get an ordinary cat brush. Can I stop you eating just a minute and come here while I can show them? And you just gently do that over his coat. And if you do that from when they're very, very young, they get used to it and they're not frightened at all. Now all cats are very, very clean animals and they'll keep themselves ever so clean, but sometimes they get fleas. All cats get fleas at one time or another, and especially in the summer when it's really hot, there'll be lots and lots of cat fleas about. There are a few things you can do to stop your cat having fleas, or when he gets them, to stop them producing more. One thing is to give your cat a cat collar. That's that, and it's a flea collar. It's a special collar, and it's got medication in that woolen piece there, and that kills off the fleas. Another idea is flea powder, which you can just rub in the coat with your fingers, and just rub like that, and your cat probably won't even notice that you're doing it. I've tried different aerosol sprays before and I find that my cat's really frightened of the noise and once I've used them once, as soon as I get any other kind of aerosol spray, furniture polish or anything out, they run a mile and hide under the table. So I think powder's the best or a flea collar. Of course, your cat will need training because when they're kittens and they can't go out, they've got to learn to use a litter tray. That's this here. Get the tray at the same time as you get the cat and you can buy this cat litter take it home and put it in the position that you want to use it in the house and teach your cat what to do. The best thing is to get some of this special liquid which you can get at the pet shop and you put a couple of drops in the tray and the cat likes the smell and will go to the tray when he wants to use the toilet. When he's very small he might need showing a couple of times so as soon as he wakes up after a long nap pop him on the tray and he'll probably do what he's supposed to. Cats need to keep their claws in very good condition as well and this is why I've got this here to show you. As cats grow bigger, their claws grow and they need to scratch, so they look for something like this. If they haven't got a tree to do it on, they're going to do it on your mum's furniture. She wouldn't like that very much. So if you haven't got a tree in the garden, why not get a big log and you can teach them, you can take them up to it and put their claws on it and show them what to do and leave it so it's in a secure place, fastened to the, the washing post perhaps, and they'll use that and keep your mum's furniture right. Now, to enable your cat to go outside, because as it gets older, it won't need a litter tray and it'll need to go into the garden. And you're not there all day long to let your cat in and out when he wants to, so we can get a special cat door. That's this here. What you'll have to do is get someone to make a hole in the door, and you fix this in, and then your cat's got his very own little door, which he can push open when he wants to, and go in and out just as he's ready. Of course, you don't keep that open all the time, and you can get a special lock to put on it to keep your cat in when you want to. There are lots of toys you can buy in the pet shops to give your cats and kittens to play with, but it isn't necessary to spend lots of money. I find things that I make my cats enjoy the most. 
things out of old socks like this, just drag it round the floor, and old pairs of tights, tie them in knots, and they play for absolutely hours with them. Once your cat's going out into the garden, there are lots of things out there that are very frightened of cats. And really, if you've got quite a large garden, you'll have a lot of birds in it. And particularly at some times of the year, there'll be birds in nests. So you want to make sure that if you put up any special bird boxes, it's going to be out of the way for the cats so that they can't get at the nestlings. You can see the kittens here are really enjoying their food and give them as big a variety as possible to eat and lots and lots of fresh water down all the time. You can see we've got different kinds of dried food and they're really tucking into that tin food there. They're really enjoying that, so I think we leave them to eat that and I'll tell you a story about two cats. Well, they're kittens really, because they're only eight weeks old and like most kittens, a bit silly. Their names were Leo and Lucy and they were tabby kittens, rather like tigers, but not the same color. They lived with Mrs. Jones and her three children and were very well looked after. Lots to eat and nice cat cushions to sleep on and a cat door into the garden so they could go out to play. They had a lovely life, but as I said before, they were a bit on the silly side and sometimes did the daftest things. Like the day they decided to play with Mrs. Jones's ball of knitting wool. They didn't notice it was still attached to the jersey she was knitting and by the time they'd finished playing, there was wool all around the house and the jersey was completely unraveled. So you might have expected that when it came to washing day, the two kittens were put out into the garden to play, so Mrs. Jones could get on with her work in peace. Well, at least that was the idea. But one day it didn't work out quite so well. Mrs. Jones had put Leo and Lucy out into the garden to play, and she'd just started to put the laundry in the washing machine when the telephone rang. She rushed to the phone, but she didn't put the lid back on the washing machine. It was one of those with a hole in the top to put the laundry in. Now, Mrs. Jones enjoyed a gossip on the phone, so she settled down to have a real good chat, leaving the packet of soap powder standing open on the table, just beside the washing machine, and the rest of the laundry in a pile on the floor. Whilst she was talking, Leo and Lucy came in through the cat flap. They'd had enough of playing outside. They were looking for something new to try. They liked the look of the pile of laundry and thought it would be great fun to jump into it from the top of the table. It looked so nice and squidgy. It was nice and squidgy, so they played this game for quite a while. Mrs. Jones was enjoying a really good gossip, and she didn't see what was going on in the kitchen. Leo climbed up on the table again to have another jump. This time, he was a bit clumsy, and his back foot caught the switch on the washing machine. With a splutter and a gurgle, the machine started to work. Swish, swash it went, and poor Leo leapt a mile into the air with fright. Even worse, he landed on the top of the packet of soap powder and knocked it over. All the powder poured into the open washing machine. Leo and Lucy got such a shock, they rushed under the table to hide, so they didn't see what was happening above. And what was happening? Well, I expect you can guess. As the machine swished and swashed and the soap powder poured into the water and turned into soapy suds, which grew and grew into great big bubbles, soon they floated out of the top of the washing machine and as the swishing and the swashing went on, more and more bubbles floated up into the kitchen, and the kittens thought this was great fun. They found they could pat them with their paws, and they would pop and disappear. What a game! There were so many bubbles they couldn't possibly pop them all. In fact, the kitchen was so full of suds and bubbles that you could hardly see the kittens. And that's how it looked when Mrs. Jones finished her chat, put the phone down, and went back into the kitchen. A kitchen full of bubbles, a washing machine overflowing with soap suds, and two very, very wet kittens in the middle of it all having a lovely game. But not for long. Mrs. Jones switched off the machine, got out the mop and cleaned up the mess, and then got two towels and mopped and dried the kittens one by one. They looked very sorry for themselves, wrapped in their towels whilst they dried off. And then, of course, they weren't allowed out for the rest of the morning in case they caught cold. They weren't too pleased about that, I can tell you. But then neither was Mrs. Jones over the whole escapade. And you can imagine she never left the washing machine without its lid on again. As for the kittens, do you know, they'd forgotten all about it by tea time. Well, that's about all for today. See you soon, I hope. Bye-bye.